Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and guess what? I finally did a trade review for you guys. I know it's been a little while. I've been getting a lot of comments, a lot of emails about, hey, when are you gonna do your next trade review? So I took a couple trades from last week. I believe they were Thursday and Friday, and I'm going to do a trade review on three trades that I took last week on Piton, P-T-O-N, on VRM, and on Y-U-M-C. You're gonna notice Two of the three of these were three bar plays. One of them was a two minute three bar play. It was a very quick hit and run, get in, get out. I think the trade lasted like literally 50 seconds to make seven or 800 bucks. Um, I also did a breakout trade on Peloton using the pre-market chart for the breakout. It was an early trade, 9.31, 9.32 in the morning. And then also I did another 15 minute three bar play. For those who say, oh, you only trade off the open. This one triggered around 10 o'clock, 10.05. Um, and again, it took a little bit longer, but that's what you expect when you're using a 15 minute chart. So I kind of spliced it up so it's not that long. It's only about eight minutes that comprises the three trades. Um, the Peloton did not hit my full target. Uh, the other two did hit targets. And for those of you who have been in the chat room or watching me trade lately in the coronavirus markets, which is what I call them, I've been using a lot more of a scalpy approach. I'm not shooting for those two or three R targets. I'm using a hit and run approach, which also means I raise up my stop loss very quickly. I'm basically protecting the downside very quickly. So a lot of these are just quick $500 to $1,000 scalps in and out. Most of them happen, or I should say most of them last less than five minutes. A few of them, in fact, I think it was the, um, the VRM lasted maybe 10 or 15 minutes, um, which seems to be a long time recently. But nonetheless, I go through each one of these trades uh, and you'll get to see not only the trade itself triggering on the matrix on TradeStation, but also pre-market. I talk about the trades and the gaps pre-market. So you can basically see it from start to finish. What I scanned for, why it was on my gap list, I explain that, and then also when the trade triggers to how I manage the trade out, all right? So if you like these videos, guys, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel because it's an awesome, badass channel. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. Yum C, Y U M C, Yum China Holdings. Gap it down to 51 bucks. Um, pretty good gap negatives. It's got support right around 50, like bottoming tail here, pivot here. So we only have a dollar to play with on Yum C. Um, a decent or average day for this thing is somewhere in the neighborhood of. Dollar fifty, something like that. Um, so maybe we get lucky, get an entry at fifty-one, trade it down to fifty. We'll wait and see. Piton, yeah, Piton, you can keep an eye on. The pre-market on this is getting a lot better than it was. So um, you could argue it has a crappy daily three-bar play, but yeah, I think Piton um, is is pretty interesting. Yeah, I like Piton. All right, so I'll just say this: um, can add Piton over ninety-four seventy-five to your favor. I tell you, this Peloton <coughs> is interesting, guys. It's very interesting. It's just, uh, well, never mind. It's gone now. Maybe at 95. All right, guys. So take note. Right here at 95 bucks, what do we see? 44 thousand shares right there okay that's on the offer that's on the sell side so when i see this i go wow i know that if and when those forty-four thousand shares on the level two disappear it tells me two things one the stock's going to skyrocket okay and two there's a lot of sellers interested you go well geez jared if there's a lot of sellers interested why would i want to buy it think about it for a second if the buyers are committed enough to get rid of take out overcome forty-four thousand sellers that means there's a lot of commitment there. And that means once the sellers are gone, there's nobody to sell into you once the stock pops above 95 bucks. All right, so think of the logic there, the psychology there. Yes, there are a lot of sellers, but if the buyers are strong enough to overcome the sellers, there's gonna be far few sellers above to sell into you, but you're also riding with a committed group of people and the committed group of people in this case is the buy side. It's a very important distinction when you're trying to read level two. Let's get back into the trade. But 44, it's gonna rip over this area. See those 44,000 shares up there, guys? Um, um, guys, I wanna watch Piton at 95 bucks. It's like $1.50 on the stop loss, all right? Um, I'm gonna use this as like a pre-market breakout, guys. 
Good, this is good that it's coming in. Good, perfect, better. Watch Piton, guys, 95 by 93.50. Piton, 95 by 93.50, based off of a pre-market breakout. All right, guys, Piton. Piton, guys. All right, it's whippy. We need a lot, 96.50, all right? So you guys are going to notice on the Piton trade right here that I'm taking some shares off, right? I started out this trade, I think it was about 700 shares. And notice I take 100, 200, 300 shares off as it pops up. The stop loss was about $1.50, okay? It popped up about a dollar. So what I did was I took about a third, a quarter stop to a third of my to shares off. But I also 50. raised my stop up very quickly on this. Because as I said a minute ago, I'm scalping stop right to now, 94. okay? I'm not 50. looking for these two and three R targets. But one of the things on the downside you'll notice from time to time and it happened to me on peloton is that i raised my stop loss up to break even which was 95 dollars, and peloton came right down to like 94 80 something like that not far below break even and then shot back up for almost the rest of the day so you have two choices there you can get back in or you can just kind of take your lickings. And I didn't lose on Peloton. I made a few hundred dollars on this trade, but I should have made probably a thousand. What I'm getting at, guys, is when you scalp, things like this are going to happen. You're protecting the downside, so you will get shaken out a little bit more often. But remember, I didn't get shaken out in terms of stopping out or losing a thousand dollars here. I made 300 and some bucks on this trade. It wasn't a loss, it was a win. But you're gonna give up some of those bigger moves from time to time when you're scalping like this. And let me be very clear about something. You're going to get a lot of these furus and gurus out there telling you how their style and their management is the best. There is no such thing as a best trade management. You have to understand what your personality style is like, what your time constraints are like, and you need to build a trade management system around those things. Okay, you are not a robot. I know we talk about robotic indifference, but you're not a robot. Okay, you're just not. So understand that when you are in a trade or when you're trying to manage a trade, make sure you're managing something that's conducive to how you actually are as a person. Otherwise, you're not gonna be very successful when you manage. So don't care what the furus and gurus say. There's not just one way to manage. There's a million different ways to manage, but the key to it is something that's easy for you to follow as well as something that makes money. Those two things are key, easy to follow and makes money. There's a million ways to do it and don't let anybody tell you otherwise because if they do, they're lying. Okay, so back test the management styles, back test it with your personality style, your time constraints and see if it makes money. All right, let's get back into the Peloton trade and see what happens. Guys, watch Yum C, look at Yum C. Guys, yes, Yum C, keep an eye on it. Oh, don't do that. Fifty seventy seven. Guys, I like Yum C. Yum C fifty seventy seven by fifty one. Yum C fifty seventy seven by fifty one. Ah, uh, Piton just shook me out, guys. All right, I'm out, Piton for one third R. All right. Guys. Stop break even. Yum C, stop break even. All right, I'm out Yum C, guys. I'm out Yum C. That was quick. It's as good as you're gonna get. Guys, this trade on Yum C was absolutely textbook, okay? Perfect, wide bar, narrow bar, drop. And sure, it only went one and a half R, right? It went about 30 cents on a 20 cent stop loss, but look how fast it happened. I made over $800 on this trade in less than one minute, literally like 50 some seconds. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to get rich quick because that's not what trading's about. And I'm not trying to tell you that every trade works like this. 
But how many people are out there working a 40 hour work week, 50 hour work week to make 800 bucks? A lot of folks. And we just made it in less than one minute. Now, sure, I understand what the detractors are going to say. Well, you could have lost money too. I get that, guys, but that's where professional experience comes in. And you'll notice in all these trades, I'm raising my stop quickly. I'm in scalp mode, taking advantage of it. And between these three trades, we make almost $2,000. And if you take them collectively, would they last less than 30 minutes total? Okay, that's what good trading looks like. But the, here's the thing. It takes years of experience to get to that level, but you can do it. You just have to work at it and understand that you're not gonna get rich quick. And then as a new trader, you shouldn't be risking tons of money when you're new. You have to take it slow, risk small amounts of money. But when you get it down, you too can have trades like Yum C, Peloton, and especially the VRM that's coming up next. VRM Vroom. Uh, under this pivot here, which is 53.10. And you're going, wait a second, Jared, it's at 55. I know it was at 54.50. Uh, it is a big moving stock, meaning uh, for this thing to move five or $10 is not that big of a deal. So I'm mentioning this to you because if this thing pulled back $2 down to 53, it would still have three to three to eight bucks left, three to seven dollars left in it. Um, so yes, it's bouncing. Uh, maybe it gives us a sell setup. I don't know. It's got great volume in the pre-market, um, mediocre daily volume, but it is what it is. Okay, VRM guys in VRM, but it's got to break the half number. And this thing is. Uh, not the easiest stock in the world to trade in terms of whippiness, right? So 55,000 shares came in here. Um, we can get it under 53.50 maybe, but 53.50, okay, there we go. Very whippy, guys, see it? Right down at 53.20 and right back up. So, we're just gonna have to uh, to wait and see. Here we go. Come on, push down to the whole number. There's fifty three fifteen. Okay. Stop to fifty four ten. Stop to fifty four ten. Stop to 54, um, stop to break even actually. Get a push under the half number, that would be good. All right, stop to break even, I think I got that in there. Um, we'll see, one more push down would be nice. Guys, I'm at break even on VRM, just FYI, okay? Stops break even. My target area in this is somewhere on 5250, guys. Look at the shares right there 22,000 at 5275. So we might, I don't know, we'll see. We might be done on, um, on VRM. See, that? look at the shares there. Again, I don't know if they're just sitting there to scare people or if they're real uh, at 5275, but there's a grip load of shares um, sitting there at 5275. If this, if this person just, you know, if those shares get eaten up, this thing's going to drop like a stone. But the question is, will it happen before it goes break even or not? I don't know. But um, this order at 52.75 uh, is holding this thing right above this area. So we'll see. But if it breaks it, just expect a, a pretty big drop on this, another 50 cents. See it right here? 20,000, they're trying to eat through them right now. 19,9, 18,8, 15,000. So they're eating away at them. They're chipping away at them. Okay, it looks like that order is getting, you know, eaten into pretty good. But there's those 14,000 shares right there. Right there. Break it and this thing tanks. There you go. Guys, I, I was just going to say, I'm going to get out here. Look, there's another 38,000 shares there. Um, I'm going to walk away here, guys. All right, I'm out VRM.